Hi, let's now continue with the second block of Module 6, Participation of Renewables in Electricity Markets. In the second block, we'll be concentrating on decision-making under uncertainty and more specifically, the news vendor problem. This news vendor problem is of relevance for the next block, where we'll be discussing offering renewable energy under uncertainty in electricity markets. The news vendor problem is one of the most classical problems in stochastic optimization and statistical decision theory. It can actually be traced back to Edgeworth, who in 1888 already published his paper on the mathematical theory of banking. In this paper, the problem is not about the news vendor, it's about how much a bank should keep in cash in its reserve to satisfy requests for withdrawal. Today it would be referred to as the bank cash flow problem and it is of relevance, for instance, for figuring out how much cash should be placed in the ATM machines that we use regularly for cash withdrawal. But let's focus back on the news vendor that gave his name to the problem we're going to be discussing. You may have already seen this kind of picture from old movies. It's the picture of a small boy saying newspapers in the streets of, say, New York. This small boy is the news vendor. In the morning, he's going to a warehouse, buying a lot of newspapers, a big block of newspapers, bringing them to the street and selling them one by one to people passing by. When going to the warehouse in the morning, he has to decide how many of these newspapers that he's going to buy and bring there. And let's say he's buying each and every unit at $3. Then during the day, when selling these newspapers, he's going to sell them per unit at $5. So making a profit of $2 per unit sold. If not selling these newspapers, beside the back pain of having to carry them around, he may be able to sell them back at, say, a price of $2 to the warehouse. So he would make a loss of $1 per unit unsold. In the news vendor problem, in view of the uncertain demand, he has to decide in the morning how many of the newspapers he's going to buy and bring to the street with him. This problem has some very specific features that we can find in many other stochastic optimization problems. So we refer to as news vendor problem any of these problems with the same characteristics. These characteristics are the one-shot possibility to decide on the quantity of interest. So here, it's the number of newspaper to buy from the warehouse in the morning. The outcome is uncertain. Here, the demand is uncertain. How many newspaper are we going to sell during the day? We have known marginal profit and loss. In view of the numbers I gave, we know it can make a profit of $2 per unit for each and every unit sold, and it will make a loss of $1 per unit for each and every unit unsold. Finally, the aim of this news vendor is to maximize expected profit. There we should clarify the fact that maximizing expected profit means that in view of the uncertainty, we want to maximize the profit as an average over all the potential uncertain outcomes. To revisit this news vendor problem and make it more modern, let's focus on the Roskilde ticket pusher problem. Roskilde is a music festival that takes place in Denmark every year in July. At the occasion of this festival, for instance in 2018, there was Eminem, but there were also some other performers like Bruno Mars and Gorillaz. We assume that a lot of people may want to go and see Eminem, right? So maybe that could give us an idea for making a profit using this as an occasion. Note here a small disclaimer. The idea of being a ticket pusher, let's say professionally, is actually illegal and, and unfair. Reselling tickets since not being able to go to a concert may be okay, but making it a business is not okay. So this should be just used as an example, not as an incentive to do it. So let's consider in practice one day tickets for the day Eminem is playing. We know these tickets are going to be sold out fast and we know quite a lot of our DTU students, fellow students, 
will not be able to buy these tickets on time, but there is demand. On the 5th of March 2018, so quite many months before the actual concert, we have the opportunity to make a good deal. We could buy a batch of tickets, let's say up to 30, at an advantageous price online, and then we would sell them out to our fellow DTU students for a profit. We have a set of prices we need to consider. The one-day tickets for Eminem were at the price of 1,050 kroner per unit online. The retail price for the DTU students or fellow students is of 1,100 kroner. Unsold tickets, we have made a deal with a friend who is also a pusher at Roskilde University, Rook, and this pusher friend will buy the unsold tickets for 930 kroner per unit. Why is this a news vendor problem? We have a one-shot opportunity. On this 5th of March 2018, we have to decide how many tickets we're going to buy online. The actual demand at DTU from our fellow students is uncertain. On that day, we don't really know who is going to be able or willing to buy tickets for this concert. The marginal profit and loss are known. We would make a profit of 50 kroner per ticket sold, the difference between these two numbers, and would make a loss of 100 kroner per ticket unsold and sent to our pusher friend at Rook. That's the difference between these two numbers. Our aim is definitely to maximize expected profit, as this is the reason, I guess, why we engaged into this game in the first place. So if you were the Roskilde ticket pusher, how many tickets would you buy? Do you have an idea? Actually, for that, you will need to know first about your demand. You will need some expert assessment. If we, we were to make a poll on campus to find out how many people may or may not buy tickets for this concert, we could represent the result of this poll with a cumulative distribution function, F, that we can abbreviate CDF. And this function represents the number of tickets we may be able to sell to our DTU fellow students with certain probability. So strictly, it shows the probability that this number x is less or equal to n, n being on the x-axis, and the probability being on the y-axis. Here are some examples of how to interpret this CDF here. The CDF starts at 0 here until n equal to 8. So that means the probability that x is less or equal to 8 is 0 we are 100% sure we would sell at least 8 tickets. Then, the probability that x is less or equal to 10 is equal to 0.1. We are 90% sure to sell more than 10 tickets. The probability that x is less or equal to 20 is equal to 0.6. We are 40% sure to sell more than 20 tickets. And eventually, in view of this plateau up there, the probability that x is less or equal than 28 is equal to 1. So that means we are sure that we cannot sell more than 28 tickets. Now that we know our profits and losses, that we have an assessment of the uncertain demand, we can make a table of marginal profit and losses in view of these probabilities. Let's do it here. We have this table with different rows that correspond to the number of tickets we could buy, from 0 to 30. Then we have different columns. The first column is this number of tickets that we mentioned. The second column is the probability that the demand is exactly equal to n. So exactly equal to 9, exactly equal to 10, exactly equal to 11, etc. On this column, this is the probability of selling the nth ticket. So you have to remember here that if you were selling more than 9 tickets, for instance, then that means you already sold the ninth ticket. So that's going to affect this probability calculation. This is 
the probability of not selling the nth ticket, so that's 1 minus this. Here we have the expected profit. The base profit value is known, it's 50. And then the expected profit is equal to the probability of sell times this profit, so P sell times 50. The expected loss is equal to the probability of no sell times the loss at 120 kroner. So this is the product of the two. And then the expected net profit is equal to the expected profit minus the expected loss. And that's what we would get from buying this ends ticket in terms of expected profit. If we were to draw this table for each and every cases, we have the case, for instance, of n less or equal to 8. We know that the probability that this happens is 0. We say we're sure we will sell more than 8 tickets. So the probability of sell, no sell, etc. is not relevant. It is sure we'll buy more than 8 tickets. Looking at the ninth ticket, the probability that we exactly sell 9 tickets is 5%. The probability that we sell nine tickets or more is one. That's what we said. We know we're going to sell more than eight tickets. So the probability we sell nine or more is one. The probability that we don't sell this nine ticket is zero. That means in terms of expected profit, we have 50 expected profit from the ninth ticket. And the expected loss is zero because the probability is zero times 120 equals zero. All right? So the expected net profit eventually is of 50 from buying this ninth ticket. We can continue like that with the various numbers. So for instance, with 10, the probability we exactly sell this tenth one is 5%. The probability that we sell at least 10 is 95%. It's 1 minus this value. The probability of no sell is 5%. And then in terms of expected profits, it's 0 0.95 times 50 equals 47.5. And the expected loss is 120 times 0 0.05, that's 6. The expected net profit is then 41.5. We can continue like that for all the numbers. And you can see on the last column, it decreases, decreases, decreases. So the expected net profit for the next ticket we buy is getting lower. As we have more uncertainty, we can sell it. And it eventually gets negative. So in terms of figuring out how many you should buy, you should look at this list and you look at the last ticket that brings you some expected net profit that is positive. And here it's 14, right? Let's formulate that mathematically. We have here lambda p, that's the purchase cost for a ticket, 1,050 kroner. Lambda r is the resale price of a ticket, 1,100 kroner. Lambda t is what we're going to call the transfer price for an unsold ticket to our rook pusher friend, 930 kroner. Then we're going to define penalties in terms of unit cost of buying less than what we need. So for any unit we could have sold, we're going to lose 50 kroner. Because if we had sold this unit, bought this unit, sorry, and then sold it afterwards, we would make this 50 kroner. For, so for any unit we don't buy and we could have sold afterwards, we lose 50 kroner. Similarly, the unit cost of buying a unit too many is 120 kroner. Because this unit too many, you will make a loss of 120 kroner when transferring it to your rook pusher friend. Then we can define the optimal number of tickets to purchase following this mathematical formula. We will have the ticket as an optimal quantile of the cumulative distribution function. That means that we can define the probability we care about in terms of the ratio between this unit cost of buying less than needed and the sum of the two, pi plus over pi plus pi pi minus. Here, based on the values we have in our problem, the optimal quantile has a nominal level 
of 0 0.294. And then we can look on our CDF, or cumulative distribution function f, where this quantile is. A quantile for a certain nominal level is defined by looking on the probability axis here at the nominal level that we uh, mentioned before. So here, for alpha star equals 0 0.294, this is the probability level we care about. And then we go across the CDF, go down to the number we have here in terms of number of tickets, and then we see that the number of tickets that correspond to this nominal level is 14. So instead of having to make these tables of expected profit, expected losses, expected net profit, etc., and having to enumerate all the cases, we can, for this news vendor problem, directly base on this unit cost for being long and short, if you want, for buying too many or not enough of the newspapers or uh, the tickets here for a pusher, we know already, based on some ratio of these quantities, that we can find the nominal level of some optimal quantile, and that going through the CDF for our uncertain demand, we will find the optimal purchase to make. Thank you for listening. I would like now to invite you to use the self-assessment quiz to check your understanding.